So to finish that point, if I only have to throw you one strike from the pitcher, my job's not that hard. But if I got to throw you three strikes and you don't make me work for anything, that's what each time this coach used to every guy that gets on base is a huge rally. And the stress, and of course the crowd. Nobody takes it a bat off. You got to be able to execute. And a hitter that makes a pitcher work harder, well, that's going to make for a team of success. told him before the division series started, you get deep in game one, and I'll make you that offer. Ross nearly did, and he went deep later in the series, but Epstein said, nope, not good enough. Oh my god, this is so boring. This is a clip from game one of the 2016 NLCS, and it's one of the most egregious examples of the wider issue facing modern baseball. The games just take too much time. Baseball is an old sport. Like, think of something, and baseball probably predates it. Baseball's older than the light bulb. Baseball's older than the telephone. Baseball even predates the Civil War. So immediately you can see the issue here, right? If a game was invented literally centuries ago, naturally people will change what they want to watch. So here's an example. That bias clip from earlier took about two full minutes in between pitches. So here's a clip from game one of the 1968 World Series. Bob Gibson is pitching. Norm Cash is at bat with two runners in scoring position. Gibson delivers the first pitch. Boom, he had a good pass, but he didn't connect. Oh, the Tigers now have had men to second and third. And now they have a chance to bring them across the plate. But they're two out. And he delivers the 0-1 less than 15 seconds later. In fact, the entire at-bat could fit in between Baez's dilly-dallying. Now, this isn't a new concept. Articles throughout the years have pointed out that the games are taking longer than they used to. The average length of 9-inning MLB games in 1968 was just under two and a half hours. In 2022, the average 9-inning game ran over three hours. The year with the quickest games was 1942, when the average 9-inning game lasted an hour and 45 minutes. Think about that, the average Major League Baseball game was finished in less time than the movie Major League. In modern times, you could watch a real 9-inning game in more time than it takes to watch Major League, Major League 2, and a decent chunk of Major League 3. Now, why were games this swift in 1942? Well, I could guess one reason, war! No, not war, war! Who's on first? You know, the big war raging throughout the Europe and the Pacific, you've probably heard of it. All the big names like Ted Williams, Stan Musial, and Joe DiMaggio were drafted, so it's understandable that baseball would significantly change for a few years, even if it was in this strange way. There are also more game-oriented reasons for the longer time. There are also more game-oriented reasons for the shorter time. In the early days of baseball, a pitcher was considered weak if he couldn't go all nine or more innings and finish a game. Hence why the most complete games in the season leaderboard is exclusively black and white pictures of guys with bushy mustaches. Will White's 75 in 1879 is the high watermark for a single season. The top three pitchers still actively playing collectively have 79 complete games. Back then, pitchers went all the way no matter what. And when I say no matter what, I mean it as Leon Cador and Joe Eschger both pitched 26 innings in a May 1920 contest. Then it got dark and the game ended in a tie, as was the style at the time. Nowadays, managers use, on average, four pitchers a game. Now sometimes when they bring in relievers, it works really well. Sometimes it doesn't. Oh wait, sorry, uh, wrong, wrong footage. Alvarez! 
Torres launches. That means at least three extra stops to warm a reliever up and get him into the game. And we can't forget manager challenges and crew chief reviews, which add some time. But what can be done? What's the solution here? Well, I'll tell you, but you might not like it. Okay, let's brainstorm here. How can we speed up baseball games? Who among us can come up with a solution? Well, pitches can go fast. If we can get every pitcher to start throwing like Jacob deGrom or Andreas Munoz, then maybe the game will speed up a little bit. But that's probably an unattainable goal. Heck, maybe we could drag Sid Finch out of retirement to throw 168 miles an hour again. But he's probably lost some velo since the 80s. But of course, every now and then, you'll encounter a pitcher who just refuses to throw fast no matter what. Well, we could always start another world war. My legal team, hi, I'm Saul Goodman, has informed me that apparently it's illegal to wish for another world war. Okay, time for plan B. Pitch clock it is. Now let's say by some miracle, the MLB would implement the pitch clock in the 2023 season. Okay, let me just draft up a fake headline here, something like uh, MLB implements rule changes for 2023, including a pitch clock. Yep, lol D. Okay, so this pitch clock will give pitchers 15 seconds to pitch with nobody on and 20 seconds with runners on. And to make things fair, the hitter only gets 8 seconds because some of them take a while. So how big of a change is this for the players? Who will be unaffected by this? Well, in 2022, there were 23 qualified pitchers who had an average tempo of 15 seconds or less. Thanks, Baseball Savant. Now for the opposite. Who will need to change because of this? Who's slow? Well, in 2022, there were 110 qualified pitchers who had an average tempo of 20 seconds or less. Thanks, Baseball Savant. Also note the Baseball Savant's pitch tempo is not timing the same as the pitch clock. There are a lot of big names on that list, by the way. AL Cy Young winner Justin Verlander and last year's MVP Shohei Otani are on here. Notable relievers like Josh Hader, Emmanuel Clase, and Ryan Helsley are here. Pedro Baez isn't on here, but that's only because he pitched in three games this season. But it's not just pitchers, hitters do it too. Kyle Tucker has a little ritual where he goes and rubs dirt into his hands. Oh hey, it's Adam Ottavino, more on him later. Now clearly, a lot of pitchers take a leisurely pace, so this isn't a change that'll go unnoticed. It will be a big deal next year, but is it a good thing? Yes, and here's why. Occasionally, and this is rare, a game will go on for a long time without many runs being scored. This can create frustration with the viewer as they must sit through over six hours of some of the most infuriating plate discipline ever seen. But that's a freak example. An anomaly, if you will. Games usually don't go that long. They almost always end in nine innings. But nine innings can still take a while. In 2016, the D-backs and Rockies played a wild game that featured a ninth inning rally that prolonged the game to four and a half hours. No extras needed. One time in 1984, the White Sox and Brewers played a game that went on for over eight hours before ending in the 25th. But let's shorten the window. How about an inning? On May 8th, 2004, the Detroit Tigers managed a remarkable eight runs in the top of the fifth. They led 14-4, but would soon implode, allowing 10 runs in the bottom of the fifth to allow the Rangers to tie the game. By the time the inning was all said and done, over an hour had passed. But let's narrow that window down even more. How about an individual at-bat? On April 22nd, 2018, Brandon Belt stepped into the batter's box to face Jaime Barilla in the first inning. By the time he flew out to Cole Calhoun and Wright, over 13 minutes had passed thanks to 16 foul balls. I'm sure Berea's pitching coach was happy that he was able to get the out after all that. If every at-bat in this game lasted that long, you're probably looking at a 17-hour game. Of course, that in itself is unrealistic. Not every plate appearance is going to last that long, some end on the first pitch. But still, the threat looms large over every time a batter steps up to bat. Baseball is the only sport without a clock. If the pitchers are good enough and the hitters abhorrent enough, the game might go on forever. This drags on the biggest stage. When a playoff game goes on long, it can be a truly miserable experience for the fans watching. Trust me, I know. The longest non-World Series playoff game was an 18-inning, 6-hour, 23-minute slog featuring a 9th-inning rally by the visiting Giants that set the game to extras in the first place. After that rally, neither team did much of anything until, coincidentally, Brandon Belt launched a solo home run in the 18th to win it. But, believe it or not, there is a worse example. Game 3 of the 2018 World Series. Good lord. Much like the last game, this one featured a late rally to force extras. But at least this one had a few moments of excitement in the 13th. And trust me, it doesn't help matters that Baez came in and pitched the 10th and the 11th. But eventually, it did end at the 7 hour and 20 minute mark. 
But not all games are this stagnant. There was once a professional game that lasted 32 minutes, but that's a story so absolutely insane it shouldn't be considered. Now, if Baez is known for being lethargic on the mound, somebody has to be hasty, right? Meet Mark Burley. Burley was a reliable starting pitcher for mostly the Chicago White Sox, and he was known for his breakneck pace. As has been pointed out by fellow YouTubers, throughout his career he pitched plenty of brief masterpieces, including a perfect game. But arguably more impressive than that was his crown jewel, his magnum opus, his piece de resistance, a 99-minute game. It was a fine Chicago afternoon on August 16th, 2005. Mark Burley took the mound for the White Sox, and Ryan Franklin took the mound for the Mariners. The game started at about 1.05 p.m., and it ended at 2.44, an hour and 39 minutes. That is ridiculously quick for a modern game. The average night in a game in 2005 was 2 hours 49 minutes. Of course, it's not unheard of to polish off a game in less than 2 hours. In 2022, there was one such occurrence between the Rays and the Cardinals. June 9th, Shane McClanahan and Miles Michaelis complete their duel in a buck 54. Speaking of McClanahan, the Rays started their ill-fated playoff run with the shortest playoff game in decades. Started by who else but Shane. Uh, no, 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 the other Shane. Oh, and Emmanuel Classe closed it out. Now at this point, you're probably wondering what can be done about this, and that's a fair question. But don't worry, MLB has you covered. An NFL game ends after 60 minutes of game time. An NBA game ends after 48 minutes of game time. I don't care about hockey. All of these sports have a time limit. Baseball wasn't like those other sports. Baseball did not have a clock. Not for the first 153 years until the commissioner, I'm blanking on his name, implemented a pitch clock to begin in the 2023 season. Okay, so this pitch clock will give pitchers 15 seconds to pitch with nobody on and 20 seconds with runners on. But the batter also has rules, he must be in the box by the 8 second mark. And to help curve the Baez problem, the pitcher is only allowed 2 step offs per plate appearance. They are allowed to make a third pickoff attempt, but if it isn't successful, then the runner moves up a base. Now don't worry, this isn't some out of left field decision, MLB tested the idea in the minors for a couple of years prior to this. And you can sometimes see that in real time. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet the Mets. Billy, this is David Peterson. He's 27 years old, and he has the fastest tempo on the Mets. His defect is that he walks everybody. Peterson has one of the fastest tempos in baseball. He's part of that sub-15 second club I mentioned earlier. To contrast him would be veteran reliever Adam Ottavino, who has one of the slowest tempos on the Mets. What's the difference between these two? Well, Peterson is young. Certainly 27 isn't that young, but David only has a few seasons under his belt. Meantime, Ottavino debuted in 2010 and has been pitching ever since. But the key here is that Peterson spent time in the minors in 2022. He's dealt with the pitch clock. He's used to it by now. Meantime, Ottavino hasn't pitched in the minors since 2016. He's 36 now. Most veterans don't like the idea of a pitch clock, but some are already used to it. Max Scherzer, who's 38 and a 15-year MLB veteran, has a 16.6 .6 tempo. And you guessed it, he spent time in AAA this year rehabbing. So that's a case-by-case -case basis of pitchers. How does the pitch clock work as a whole? Does it work? Does it actually shorten games? As a matter of fact, it does. Now detractors might point out how pitch clock games usually result in a violation about once every other game. And that's true, but counterpoint, who cares? The average MLB game time in 2022 was 3 hours and 4 minutes. With the pitch clock in the minors, games are approaching 2.5 hours on average. Clearly, it works. Now there are a few caveats to that. Obviously, there are more and longer ad breaks in the majors, but overall, the amount of baseball is the same. The pitch clock doesn't shorten the actual games, it just cuts out all that complete dead time that nobody wants to watch. And if you still think otherwise, trust me, pace of play is very important. I mean, really, who would want to waste 14 minutes of their time watching complete nonsense? In conclusion, the pitch clock is good, you should want it, and you will like it. Or hey, maybe you could be one of those miserly old baseball traditionalists who are against things like FIP, the designated hitter, and the concept of integration. Or maybe you could accept what's coming and embrace the pitch clock, because it's what baseball desperately needs. And this is down here at the end of the script, I'm not sure why, Among Us. <laughs> Well, folks, it's been almost 15 minutes, and Luis is still here rocking the baby. Also, shout out to the Astros winning it all. That's pretty cool. Well, I'll be honest, I